What's up, everybody? Rich with Larry, man, coming at you with another video. The most effective ways to practice and learn guitar. Step number one. What you want to do, you want to practice with a focus on what you're going to practice. Noodling is okay. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you get ready if you're just warming up, but that shouldn't be your whole practice routine. Your practice routine should consist of all right, today I'm going to learn how to do this lick or I'm going to learn how to do this scale or I'm going to learn this song and stay focused on that. That would be the first thing. Now, personally, one of the things that I started out doing was learning songs. Like I would learn, you know, acoustic songs in the first position, something easy to play and just stay focused on that. And then that way I can kind of burn those chords in my mind and it helped me learn chords quicker. Now, the second thing I would do is practice my technique correctly. You don't want to do all down strokes when you're picking. You want to focus on alternate picking. So what is alternate picking? Well, alternate picking is basically you're alternating from up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So. All right, so alternate picking. You want to use as less energy as possible to get to the next note. So if you were playing something like this. So you get my drift. I'm going up and down, up and down. Instead of just doing down strokes like this, you don't want to. Well, I'm going to show you what you don't want to do. You see how much energy you're wasting and time you're wasting. You want to be able to get from the chord to the, the lead. Or, you know, if you're jumping back and forth between rhythm and lead, you want to be able to go between those two things smoothly. You know what I'm saying? All right, so the last tip I want to leave y'all with is knowing how to transpose songs. For example, a lot of people use a capo. A capo is cool. Don't get me wrong. You can do a lot of stuff with a capo. You put the capo on like this, like so. This right here. And I'm playing... <laughs> So if I wanted to bring that down a couple of keys, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be just moving my capo up and down on the neck. What I want to do is know how to transpose a song mentally. So if I was on the fifth fret or for this example on the third fret. And the bandmate was like, hey, bro, can you play that in an A minor going to the E for me? Instead, same thing, just bring it down a couple of, uh, tr you know, transpose it down a few notes. Be like, okay, then, especially if you got a lead singer and they don't sing that high, or uh, you need to, you know, bring it down if it's a, a female singing the song originally, but it's a guy so you covering it or whatever, you know, you, you want to bring it down a couple notches. So instead of doing like this, you would do this. So yeah, learning how to transpose a song from one key to the next is a definite tool you want to know. You know, if you plan in a band or if you plan at your local church Especially uh, churches do this a lot. They do this a lot. There's somebody get up and last week, the, the lady on the front row sang the song. Now, this week, the lady on the back row want to sing it, but she 
singing in, uh, in three keys lower than what it originally was written in. You see what I'm saying? Or what y'all originally played it last Sunday or whatever it may be. So you got to know how to find that root note where their voice is, transpose it down or up depending on where their vocal range is and play the song in that key for them. You know, being able to do it on the, at the drop of a hat is very, very useful. So, but anyway, that's my tips for today, guys. Uh, my little three tips. Uh, sorry if this video kind of long. I know my videos are usually shorter than this, but uh, y'all go out there and y'all have a good one, man. Peace.